Hello, everyone. Lucas Chaffee with Kiko Chat, based in New York. I'm a software engineer and an open space facilitator. In today's session, we're going to first orient you to the Kiko Chat that you're in. You'll see the different parts of the page and how they work together. And then we'll take a look at some other Kiko Chat events to see what other facilitators have done. And finally, you'll get a chance to spend a lot of time customizing your own event that you could test out for your colleagues. It's going to be available for you to test out even after this is over. I'll share my screen with you. And I'm sharing my screen now. You're looking at the Kiko chat that you've entered. You're not able to type on my screen because this is my screen being shared. If you want to type on the screen, this is a notes page. And I just put it in. So if you came in early to the event, you won't see it. But if you refresh the page, you will see it. These are the notes we've been using for the other six trainings in the past day and a half. So I just keep building on the trainings and the notes and the notes get better and better. If you would like to edit this or you want to see your own web browser, you're going to need to get out of Zoom's full screen, screen share. There's some words at the top, maybe exit full screen, or something like that. Can anyone tell me what is the word that you see to get out of full screen on your computer? I, I don't see word. I always press just the exit button, so the escape button. So I it uh, becomes small and then I can enter another screen, but it's different. Excellent. It might be different on different operating systems. So try the escape button and that should make Zoom come back to one window that you can then move around. Some people like to move Zoom to half of the screen on the left or right and move Kiko Chat to the other half of the screen. So here, if I move Kiko Chat to the one half of the screen, at some point when it gets narrow, it takes up the full width and it doesn't have two columns in there, it just has one. And you could see the notes down below and the breakouts are hidden. So you would click here, show breakouts, and then you can move to the different breakouts. So for now, I'm going to have this be full screen and I'll show you around the space. Again, please feel free to interrupt me with any questions. This will take about a minute or two and we'll pause for questions there. Here we have a big photo that you can change. This gives people an idea of where they are. It could be a beautiful photo of natural landscape or it could be the photo of where you meet in person. And it could be the company's logo, your client, whomever you're working for, or it could be the name of your event, whatever you like. On the right-hand side, you see a big notes document and got a lot of colors in it as we scroll down. These are some of the questions that people asked previously. And this is a tool called Etherpad. It's a very engaging document that other people can type on and you're welcome to type on it, especially here for the questions. I'm going to put our questions up here at the top. So you're going to be invited to add any questions you have there because we have a lot of people so that you probably already have one or two questions on your mind. And if you want, you can take a look at the other questions that people had. Kiko Chat is a tool for thinking together. You have better tools for broadcasts and webinars. Uh, Kiko is when you want people to be maybe thinking, creating, brainstorming, working together, collaborating. And it's powerful because you can have all these other tools that people are used to collaborating on, whether it's Google Docs or some whiteboarding tools like Miro or Google Drawings, Nextboard. And you can bring those tools right into this web page. So you can replace these notes with other collaborative tools. On the left hand side, you can see we're all in the main room. And by default, every Kiko Chat event has 10 breakout rooms. Each of these breakout rooms looks just like this with a different photo. And each of these breakout rooms is connected to a Zoom meeting. Not a Zoom breakout room, 
a full Zoom meeting. So you have full control over this Zoom meeting. If I go over to room one down here, I'm gonna just click on it. You're invited to do it too. You won't break anything. If I click on it, I'm gonna see a new photo and I see a new notes document. Mm -hmm. I could see other people are doing that too. It usually takes five or 10 seconds for the profile icons to show up. And you're welcome to type there if you'd like. Please notice at the top left, it says join video for room one. Now that I've moved, if I wanted to, I could leave this Zoom meeting where I'm with you in the main room and I can join the Zoom video for room one. We recommend that people do that by actually leaving the meeting, moving, and then joining the Zoom meeting. Some people that don't leave Zoom first, if they're new, they might not see a pop-up that Zoom has, which says, you're already in one Zoom meeting. Do you wanna leave that one and join the new one? And you can just click yes or join meeting and you'll be moved from one Zoom meeting to another without having to close Zoom. But we do recommend first that people close Zoom because not everyone's gonna see that message. Zoom, I think, is still working out some kinks. That pop-up message that says you're already in a Zoom meeting does not show for everybody. So I'm gonna go back to the main room and we'll show you some other things here. We have some admin controls and you can change the width of the side panel. You can make it smaller. And here's some formatting options at the top. I'll pause here and take a look and see if we have any questions. Okay, we have the first one. And then please feel free to just speak your questions or type them here. So if you have your own Zoom account, you, you might be wondering, how do you connect your Zoom account to Kiko Chat? You don't have to, but you can. And most of the time people don't, and I'll explain why. These are separate Zoom meetings. So you can have up to 100 breakout rooms. So that gives you 101 Zoom meetings. These Zoom meetings have a capacity of 300 people. They're called API meetings. An API is the way two computers or servers talk to each other. They're not Zoom Pro, they're not Zoom Business, they're Zoom API meetings. And that's how we can create so many of them. The Zoom API meetings are created on the spot when someone clicks join video. We go to Zoom and instantly get a message back from Zoom with a Zoom meeting ID. And that is the meeting that the person enters. We have a few questions. Do you connect your personal Zoom account? You don't have to, you don't need to pay Zoom because Zoom is gonna charge us. Zoom charges us half a cent per minute per person. We charge you one cent per minute per person plus $1 per day. Here's the link to our pricing calculator. Let's take a look at the pricing calculator. It's very affordable. 50 people or even 100 people for four hours is $3.40 per person. So if you have a workshop where you're charging people 50 or 100 or $200, $3.40 for that workshop for four hours is very reasonable. It's less than the cost of parking your car. If you do have your own Zoom account, you can connect it to the main room. We have to edit something about your account. So just email me at lucasakikochat.com and we can figure that for you. There's my email address. And then you're able to put a Zoom meeting in all of those rooms. You might wanna do that if your client wants to use their Zoom meetings. Maybe they have specific security restrictions that only people in their company can join the Zoom meeting. And so that's why we let you connect any Zoom meeting to any of these rooms. You might also wanna use your Zoom meeting or buy a Zoom business account from us 
if you're going to do multiple language translation. Zoom Business has a capacity of 300, and both Zoom Pro and Zoom Business can be increased to 500 or 1,000 for either 50 or $90. We pay Zoom and you pay us. It's the same. We don't mark that up. When you do use your own Zoom meeting, it cuts the per minute cost in half for that room. I'll say that again. I know that's a lot of information, but when you use your own Zoom meeting, it cuts the per minute cost in half for that room. Can you use breakout rooms in these Zoom meetings? Yes, you can. So I'm the host of this Zoom meeting and I can create breakout rooms. You might wanna use breakout rooms if everyone's gathering to start your conference at 9 a.m., but people are coming early, maybe you want them networking in groups of two or three. So you can use Zoom breakouts inside the Zoom meeting at the main room. The advantage there is you can summon them back. You can call them all back because Zoom allows you to push and pull people. Kiko Chat doesn't allow you to push and pull people into these rooms. We call these spaces, breakout spaces. You can call them rooms. Any word you like, you get to change the word that shows up here. It doesn't even have to have a number. It could say Paris, Berlin, Tokyo. Those can be the rooms. And then when you get to Paris, Berlin, Tokyo, you may see a picture of Paris, Berlin, or Tokyo here. I'll come back to this top question. I see you're still typing it out. Thank you for that. What would be the difference between including a Google Doc or Etherpad? Here, this is Etherpad doesn't require any sign in and it's pretty simple to use. The advantage of a Google Doc is that you can export it as a PDF. You can also add more formatting and pictures. You cannot add pictures to Etherpad the way we have it here. You cannot make the text larger. So it's a little bit more limited, but we find that simplicity also helps the tech move into the background and people just focus on the words and they focus on the people. If you put in a Google Doc, it'll be a little bit more work for you to do. You have to go to Google and create the Google Doc. Then you copy the link and you put it into a specific place on the edit page. And we'll show you how to do that. I have admin controls, but you do not. What are the different roles in Kiko Chat? In this Kiko Chat event, there are three roles. One is administrator of the event. I'm an administrator because I created it. I can also use your email address and paste it in and then you become an administrator when I do that on the edit event page. So the second type is participant. Anybody who is not an administrator is a participant. And you can also give people Zoom host access. So people can be participants with Zoom host access, and they will see the admin controls, but when they click there, it's just gonna have join as host. It will not have all of these other options. You can let people become the Zoom host for any one room or for all the rooms. And we're gonna get in the admin interface and you get to read the help text. It's so much information that I'm sharing with you now you don't have to memorize it all. What I recommend, the way you listen is just trying to listen to what is possible, not trying to memorize how to do it. Because as long as you know that it's possible, you will know where to find it. It can only be in one or two places. What are the most common mistakes beginners make when they first start using Kiko Chat? Start simple is what I'd first recommend and use tools that everyone's familiar with, like Google Docs or Etherpad. If you put so much on the screen, participants will blame you because they say, there's too much going on. And already, when I threw all of this at you with all these colors, many of you probably said, whoa, this is unfamiliar. I don't feel comfortable right now. But I knew that you're here to learn, you're gonna be here for a while, and we're gonna go through all of this. So I felt like it was okay. You can also select the text here, and I'm going to remove the color. And I think that makes it look better. It's less 
jarring, less intimidating. So I recommend number one, do a free test event with your friends or family or colleagues. Some people throw parties or happy hours here for their friends. And this way you get comfortable as the organizer, knowing how people flow through the space, what kind of questions they might have. I have another, to, to, another page here of common tech, let's see if I can get it, common tech problems that people might experience on Kiko Chat. And we'll just look at the table of contents here and I'll share the link with you. So number one, a participant does not have access to the event. Maybe they couldn't find the email that you sent to them or it got caught in spam. Or when they get to Kiko Chat, they create an account and it has the wrong email and you've restricted access to your event to only people with specific emails. We'll talk about how to make that invitation process simple. Another one, participant doesn't know how to switch between Zoom and Kiko. Zoom is an app, Kiko's in the web page, and they might not know how to move it side by side or front to back. Maybe the chat window that's over here, they might be zoomed in so far that this chat window is so tall they can't see this X. Sometimes that happens. Participant might want the phone number to call in. I'll, uh, there's an easy way to show them that. In your event, you just click help. And here's the information. It says, if Zoom does not open, you can try clicking here. It's gonna open up Zoom in a new tab and that will always work. Then for some government agencies that cannot download Zoom, they can open up Zoom in the browser. So they'll see the video in the browser on a separate tab, but not in the Zoom app. If people need the phone number, it's here. Click on the phone right here for all the international dial-in numbers. So solutions to common tech problems. I'm gonna copy this and share it with you in our notes. Thank you for those that are taking some notes. I appreciate that. If we use our own Zoom account, do we have more than one Zoom meeting available for the Kiko rooms? When you use Zoom and it's your own personal account, it's important to know that Zoom will not let you have two Zoom meetings going at the same time for your Zoom Pro account. So you cannot make 10 meetings and connect each one to a different room. That's one disadvantage of when you use your own Zoom meeting and put it here. You might be using it before the event begins. And if your people are testing this out, they might see a message that says the host is in another meeting. So if you use your own Zoom account, you might wanna connect it to the main room. And most people don't because it's only gonna save 30 cents per hour per person. And sometimes it's just more headache than it's worth. If you use your own Zoom account, the photos are gonna show here for 60 minutes. If you don't use your own Zoom account, the photos disappear when someone leaves Zoom. So what you see is a bit more accurate when you're not using Zooms, your own Zoom and you're using Kiko Zoom. It's because when you use the, the Zoom meeting that Kiko creates, Zoom sends us a message when you successfully join and then we wait for that message for when you successfully leave to remove your red icon from your profile photo. We also remove the profile photo if I go to room one, I'm still connected to Zoom with you in the main room. But now I see join video for room one. If you remember from a few minutes ago, I said leave Zoom and then move and then join Zoom. I'm not doing that here. I'm just not even leaving Zoom. I'm just clicking join video. 
And if you feel comfortable on Kiko Chat, you're welcome to do that when you're in your events. You don't have to leave Zoom first. But if I choose cancel, you'll notice my video icon still went down to room one. Kiko Chat makes the assumption that if you click a green button, you're gonna get in eventually. So that's why we move your icon down. So even I'm still connected to the main room, it looks like I'm connected to Zoom in room one. So I'm gonna go back to the main room and just so that my icon shows back up there, I click this button again, join video, and I can click cancel because I'm already in the meeting with you. So I don't need to open Zoom. And then uh, this is gonna pop back up there. And I think the video icon should go on. There it is, okay. These are great questions. Please feel free to keep them coming. If you have a specific follow-up question to something I'm saying right at that moment, again, please interrupt and you can get that question answered. I think simplicity and not getting perplexed with channels is the potential of Kiko Chat. That is one advantage. When you're sharing collaboration documents in Zoom chat, the Zoom chat goes away or someone saves it you don't have a place where everybody can go back to. In Kiko Chat, once you close Zoom and the meeting's over, people can come back. So you'll be able to come back today and look at these notes and tomorrow. And you'll also be able to go to the RSVP page of the event, it says event RSVP page. In American English, we use RSVP page to say registration. So in French, respondez s'il vous plaît is saying, please register, please respond. And so, it's one of these phrases in English where people don't necessarily know what it means in French, but in English they mean, please respond and register. So these are the people who registered, but you see we have more people present than registered. If we click here, we can see more information about where everybody's from if they've put a location. So it looks like United States, Canada, and Europe. Wonderful. Here's the start time for the event. You can add it to the calendar. If you click here, you could see it in a bunch of different time zones. The start time in all these different time zones. And then you click participate now to get in. I'm gonna go back to that page of something helpful. If you are the administrator, this is the backup plan. If Kiko Chat is not available, but it, it's almost always available, we have very little downtime. But sometimes things are surprising on the internet and you don't wanna to have to rely on any one tool. So if you click call in info for all breakouts and only you can do this if you're the admin, we send you an email that has all of your Zoom links in an email. So let's say Kiko Chat stops working. You could still have your conference because you'll have all of your Zoom links for breakout one, breakout two, breakout three. And I'll also show you how to keep track of all of the documents that you have the Google Docs and the images and the videos, there's a way to keep track of that. So worst case scenario, if Kiko Chat was gone for the day, you could still run a successful conference. You would just email all that information to your participants and they can still join you in all the Zoom links. But if Kiko Chat goes down, it's likely that a lot of websites are down because we depend on things like Amazon and other services that are core mm -hmm. to many, many websites. May I ask the principal question? because I have not understood how to put my, my question here into yes. this. Uh, uh, I, I have not, uh, uh, is it right that if I work with Chico Chat, that at the same time I work with Zoom, always? You don't have to use Zoom, but Zoom is the easiest one to use with Kiko Chat. When you click join video, by default, it's gonna open up Zoom and it's gonna open it up without opening a new tab. If you wanna use other tools like Microsoft Teams, Adobe Connect, Skype for Business, Google Meet, it's gonna open up a new tab here. So people will have two tabs. If it's Microsoft Teams, then it opens up the Microsoft Teams app. So now you've got the app, just like Zoom, which is the same, but then on Kiko Chat, you've got two tabs in the browser. So it's a little less simple. But yes, you can do it with all of those tools. You can connect a different Microsoft Teams meeting to every one of your rooms. 
Yes, but I mean, I, is Chico Chat, uh, depend Chico Chat on Zoom or can Chico Chat work alone? Technically, I mean. You do need a tool for video. And so we okay. recommend Zoom, but okay. you can also substitute Jitsi is another tool. I'll show that. Here's an example of Jitsi inside a Kiko Chat event. This is just an example. Use Chrome or Firefox, not Safari and Jitsi. And Jitsi is good for groups of, they say 25 to fewer than 25. Let's see, here I am. Okay, so video is in the browser. It's not in Zoom or a separate app. So if I scroll down, the notes are below. It's a different event with different notes. So that's an example of another video tool that is not Zoom that you can use. Did that answer the question? Okay. Yes, thank you. You're very welcome. I think I'm quite lost already. <laughs> I see uh, I see the, the screen with all the questions, but now when you said that, uh, let me share this with you, I saw nothing. I still had the screen with all the questions. Did anyone else see that? Maybe my computer went slow. Did anyone else see Jitsi? Yes, I did. Yeah. Yes, it worked out. Okay. Yes. yes, I did too, yes. Yeah, it was slow, but it worked. Yeah. Okay, it might have been a connection, a slow connection on either of our ends. So that was just a website where you could see video above the notes. Do you have other questions when you had mentioned that you're lost? Is there anything else I can explain? If okay. I want to put a question into this, uh... yes to write down, how can I do it? I don't know, I have no idea. I'll help you. So I, I'm gonna stop screen sharing for a moment so you can get oriented. I'm gonna copy this link. This is the page that you came to and click join video. So I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna put this into the Zoom chat. Add your questions here if you like. And there's the Kiko chat link to our main room. So if you open that, it's gonna open up in your browser and so you could put Zoom on one side and notes on the other. I normally just do, I only look at one and I, I won't look at Zoom or I won't look at the notes. I, I see a chat room, but I, I mean, in the chat room, there are not the questions I see on your screens. Let's see, if you scroll down, maybe you will see. So you have to go down a little bit and then you see the colored notes. How about this? Would you like to share your screen with us? And then I can show you where it is. You're probably not the only one who has this question for us. So I'm glad that you asked. I did have the same question before, but, but when I, I uh, clicked on the link, uh, I... Uh got to this page so then I could write if I if I wanted to yeah good good I did this too but it, it didn't help me <laughs> Farah can you please share your screen and then we can see what you see share the share the screen with zoom yes please okay I see another message that someone didn't see the notes. Well, we'll see what Farah sees and we'll see it. Uh, maybe that will help other people get oriented too. Mm -hmm. Elias mentions that when they do facilitation, they put the notes on one side and Zoom on the other and different events will do that. Some events don't. Many events that are with a speaker, the speaker will share their slides by sharing their screen and their slides will be on the screen. So these are all options and you can coach and suggest to your participants. Are, are you able to share your screen? Well, 
I mean, I wasn't right if this was a, um, I shared, but I saw things I would not to share. Therefore, I. Okay. When when the I screen to, pops up to... and it gives you all the options to share, select the one that you want to share, and then there's a blue button so that to start the screen sharing. You don't have to share too, if you would like to pass, that's completely- No, I mean, I have so many windows open, but I saw them and I, this is not the thing I want to share, you know? So mm -hmm. therefore I was- um, uh... The other thing you can do is you put up the thing that you wanna share on your screen and then go to Zoom and screen share. When you screen share it, you select desktop. It will show everything, but because the thing that you wanna share is right on top, it's gonna show that first. Well, I'm thinking I'm, I'm too, I cannot do this. Do you have anything that is private? Because if nothing's private, then I can show you how to share your whole desktop. But if there's financial information or anything there, private emails, we don't wanna invade your privacy. Mm. I'm lost. We'll try one more time. Would you like us to try one more time? Because I think other people are in the same boat that are trying virtual facilitation for the first time. And also for people who are skilled facilitators. Do you hear me? Yes, yes, your, your sound very clear. For okay, people who are skilled- Because I do not, I, I do not see my, my Zoom. I do not see my Zoom. Okay. I, only... I can help you. Okay, now I see it, yes. Okay, great. And at the bottom, please click the green button that says share screen. Please tell me when you clicked it. I have, I have done. Now you uh, see several options. Yes. The one at the top left, what does the one at the top left say? This is uh, with your picture. Let's select that one. Okay, great. What do you see? <laughs> I, I can see the same? I can see, yes, you see the butterfly and the people. Okay. Now, your notes are not showing and it's, it's possible. Let's try refreshing the page. So click on the butterfly and then we're gonna refresh this page the way to refresh the page, if you're on, are you on a Mac? Yes. Command R for reload or refresh. Command R will refresh the page or you can hit that circle button. I don't have this. I mean, I see now the screen. I cannot work on the screen probably. Yes, it seems like the notes so it's possible that there's some Safari. Please don't click that. We just stay right here is good. Um, so your notes are not showing. You see, let's scroll down. And if you, sometimes some participants will have some settings where they can't see something. Maybe it's Mentimeter, which is a tool you can use for surveys. So the first thing is we can close the chat. The chat is at the bottom right and it says learn about Kiko chat and there is a gray circle next to that. The gray circle is all the way on the right of the screen. Do you see the zoom faces on the right side of the screen or the top of the screen? I see it on the right side, the pictures, the zoom pictures. Okay, and then in the middle of the page on the right side, do you see a gray circle? Oh, hi. I see only this circle to close the window. Please close that. Okay, so now scroll down. The notes are not showing and we can explore why, but this is what you would tell someone who cannot open whatever document is in that white space. Please click the orange button at the bottom and it's gonna open that tool in the new window. And 
probably my system is too old. Maybe you, I think my, my system is too old. Maybe I could do it with the other computer. Okay. Because, uh, maybe you, you, um, you work with some other person and I try to see if I can do it with my other computer, but this will need some time. Yes, okay, well, this, this is fine. You can hit the- Because this that Safari cannot open the site. No problem. And in this, we would never stop the facilitation. This is what we would do during a tech check where people who want to make sure their system works, they would come early and you can test out things like this. So does anyone else see a blank whites page? Only Farah? No, but it was helpful to have this experience that it can happen. No? And yeah, first thing is to refresh the page or yeah, have a check, tech check in the, uh, beforehand. Exactly. So that was good demonstration and of reality. Yeah, it will happen to all of us if we facilitate sooner or later. <laughs> exactly, Suzanne. Yeah. And so what are some workarounds? Well, I can share my screen and then she can see what's on my screen. That's, that's one option. Some people are gonna call in by phone from a place that has no internet connection. So how do you work with someone who's just calling in by phone? And I find that people are very accommodating. They want to include people on these online calls, especially the types of groups that we convene. I'll share my screen again and let's see, we'll quickly go through the remaining questions and then we'll start letting you Oh, I want to show you a few events and then you can create your own events. What is the usual learning curve of an average user to get the basics and to use it for a four hour event? Five minutes. I know that that, I mean, you have to understand that what you're seeing here is all the complexity, but it's five minutes for someone to get used to it. And indeed, Many of you don't know Kiko Chat before today, but you were able to join video in less than one minute. It's because I put a message up there at the top, welcome. And now I think it's been deleted, but it said, please click the green button to launch Zoom. Another way that you can display this message, let's take a look at the edit interface. This is where you edit it as the administrator. You'll be here in a moment when you create your own event, you're just gonna put in a title and the start time. This is two hours, 120 minutes. And right now we're putting in a message at the top of the page that says, please click the green button. That's over here in custom formatting. Please click the green button to launch Zoom. Mm -hmm. I want it to be yellow, background with black text. I think you can leave this blank or you can put 20 pixels. I'm gonna leave it blank and see. Uh, I think that's gonna be fine without, in case you don't know what the padding is. Okay, there, it shows the message. I'm gonna go back in and put the padding. It'll make it look better. But you know, that's it right there. It could be very slim. So we go back to custom formatting. And we'll say 20 pixels. I don't think we need to put the PX. Let's see. Yep, you just put the number. So that says 20 pixels. Pixels is a measure of distance. And so there's a big bright banner that says, welcome, please click the green button to launch Zoom. People will definitely see that. And once they click this, you're gonna be speaking to them and they're gonna not be lost anymore. This space can get crowded over time. Are there any templates? Well, one thing you could do is you can have multiple documents across the top. It doesn't have to be just one document. That's one way to organize. Another is you can put in a Google doc. Many Google docs are dozens of pages long. They can have a table of contents at the top. Can you use other tools like Miro and Mural? Yes, let's take a look at all the tools you can embed. 
It's on line 24, tools you can embed. I'm gonna make that link active here. All right, now it's active. And there are dozens of tools you can embed. These are tools that we've seen other facilitators use. Here are some tools for taking notes. Google Docs and Etherpad are common. Cryptpad is in the European Union, is more privacy focused. Here's some whiteboarding tools. You had asked about Miro. Miro is great. It's embeddable. Mural is great, but Mural is not embeddable. M-U-R-A-L, not embeddable. Mentimeter, Slido, TeamBits are great. And also GroupMap. They're built by people who understand facilitators. You can put in YouTube videos, Vimeo videos, webinar tools. Padlet is fun, looks like Post-its. Networking tools, which we'll get a chance to see today. Social media, even puzzles, so people can take a break and work on puzzles together. So you would even include, think about including spatial chat into Kiko, that's cool. I thought they. It, I thought for them as a kind of either or, but it's of course it's not. It doesn't have to be cool. Let's try that out. Let's definitely do that as a, a test. Everyone can see mm -hmm. what it's like. And people who are not familiar with spatial chat, it's a fun tool for networking. Lucas, I have one question. Yes, please. If I come in with my other computer because there yeah, it's um, it's uh, the browser is updated, is this disturbing this process? It will not disturb. Okay. Fernando asks is in the chat, is Chrome more reliable for Kiko? You can use any browser, but some people on Safari do see a problem like that with some of the embedded tools, but it's not most Safari users. Maybe with some more investigation, we can find out why. I, I'd say over 95% of Safari users are, are gonna be okay. And it'd be interesting to know what the exact problem is. Here's a tool we had asked about. We're looking at Miro. So we'll scroll down. The, so this whole document is just screenshot after screenshot of different tools you can embed into Kiko Chat. This is a beautiful one called Miro, very powerful. A little bit complex, but very powerful. Here's other tools like Nextboard. So you could just scroll through and see all the different options. That link again is here on line 24. How do we enable translation capacity in the main room? You will need a Zoom business account. Zoom business is the only way to do translation in Zoom as far as I know. We have 25 Zoom business accounts that we turn on and off for different months. So you can either buy it for $20 from us or $20 from Zoom. And it's up to you, you get cloud recording. And when you buy it from us or them, the per minute cost, it's normally one cent per minute, it's cut in half. And that's because Zoom is not charging us half a cent per minute. So we pass that savings on to you. So the cost will be half a cent per minute per person in that room. The cost per person, if we use Zoom and Kiko, there's no cost if we use Zoom in our own account, Teams, Jitsi, et cetera. Okay, coincidentally, I have just answered that one. It's half price per minute if you use your own Zoom account. It's not gonna save a lot of money. It's gonna save you 30 cents per hour per person. And sometimes it might just be more work. So it's, it's up to you. You'll still have the $1 per day charge per person. And you can use your own links in some of the rooms and then Kiko links for the other rooms. You can mix and match like that. When you get the bill, we won't know how many minutes you use your own Zoom for. So there'll be a place where you can let us know and then that's, we'll adjust the bill. Can you delete other people's comments here? Yes, you can. It looks like a collaborative document, but I don't see who is writing what. If it is important to know who is writing what, then you can ask everyone to put their name in front.
in our case, it's not necessary, but for, for some of your work with your clients, it might be very important. All right, we have some more questions. Is it possible to use Otter for transcriptions? One that we've used is Wordly, W-O-R-D-L-Y, which is pretty neat for transcribing into 18 languages, costs about $150 an hour. So it's great for those international organizations that have the budget. I have not used Otter. And you would use any of these translation tools where people are talking and then it goes into a document and you can see the text, the transcript being written out. You would use it and integrate it with your own Zoom account or one that we provide for you. Kiko Chat won't know whether you're using Wordly or Otter or any of those tools. Kiko Chat just knows here is the link that we give participants when they click the green button. Can you integrate another tool on the fly? The translation tools and anything you got to configure with Zoom, you want to do ahead of time. But can you add another tool on the fly right now? Yes, we can. And let's show that. I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to, I'm going to say, here are some topics that we want to put in our room. So if you're an open space facilitator, you know this process where people choose the topics they want to discuss and you want to put them in these rooms. So as the admin, I'm going to copy those on the right-hand side and I click admin controls. I click set topics for breakout rooms. I paste them in. I click save. And now all of our rooms have a topic. Any of the rooms that don't have a topic are hidden. They still exist. So you could set them up, but they're just hidden. Okay, looking for Can we integrate another tool right now? Yes, we can. I'll put a few more question spaces here for everybody else that wants questions. All right, if you're feeling adventurous, we're going to integrate spatial chat. So I'm going to click edit. And you know what? We're going to start a little simpler. OK. Uh, if you want to follow along, here's the tutorial that we're using. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Actually, a, a little bit more demo. And I'm going to go a little faster so you can start uh, doing this on your own. Here's a demo of a fun event. So we'll start with an open space. Open space is where the participants choose the topic. Here's an open space with about 400 participants. I'll click participate now. We enter the opening circle. We see a photo of the opening circle. So you can customize those butterfly photos and make them look however you like. Here's some announcements. They're saying the event is finished. Here's how they chose the agenda. They had a blank agenda which just lists the spaces, space A, B, C, D, E, and then people put in the topics and they put their name. They had 30 sessions over three days. So here we are in session one. Breakout space A has this topic. Breakout space D has this topic. And then if we scroll down on Kiko Chat, we're going to see all of the spaces. So I can walk into space A and take a look at the notes there. So we'll open up space A. They have a new logo here. Welcome to space A. Here's some instructions. And all their different sessions had their own notes. Let's 
So the node side, um, Lucas, has had also been kind of customized and with a logo. So the, so the had a kind of branding for that. Did I get that right? Yes. Yeah. You can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. All right. So they had a template here. Yeah, with a template. Yeah. And people filled in the notes. Do you have to prepare all the documents for the different sessions? If okay. you want to have a template, yes. But in our event over here, if we go to room two, we will see a notes page that is available that you don't have to prepare. It's just blank. I meant if you want to have multiple ones like they had with the tabs on top, then? Yes. With the tab, so here we don't have any tabs on top. We just have one tool. If you want multiple tools in this space, I will teach you how to do that. I think it's a good good thing I should teach you how to do it now. You could put all these different tools, YouTube videos, images, PDFs, and they all just change what is displayed in the center. In this case, they created the Google Docs on Google Drive. They made them all, and then there's a way to keep track of them. So um, let's see, a few more things. Here's the results of an open space that we put together with a great video, 670 landscape architects and a beautiful book of proceedings. Sandra on our team, created this. She's a landscape architect also. So she made it look great. And we can help you do things like that too. It's taking a little while to load since my connection's slow. But... Okay, I'll stop my screen share here. And now I'll let you start the tutorial. And we're going to, everybody's going to get a chance to, oh, I'll, I'll put in the link to that. Um, close this out so it loads a little faster. If you wanted to see that example, I'm going to put it up here in the main room in just a moment. So, Everyone's gonna get a chance to create their own event and we're gonna add a Google doc to it and then customize it more. You change the photo here. You can even put a beautiful photo across the top. And I'm gonna put uh, example book of proceedings and video from an open space event. Please start here. Everybody does not need to do this, but I recommend it. It's easy. We're gonna go through this tutorial. So you'll, you'll click there. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and you're gonna click on that tutorial right there. And then we'll walk through together. Does anyone need help finding that link? I will paste it into the chat to make it easier. Okay, I put in the link for the tutorial to create your own event. It would be wonderful if someone would like to share their screen with us. Someone who's never created a Kiko Chat event before. You don't have to be the most tech savvy person. You just feel if you feel like I feel like a regular person and I want to give it a shot and I don't know what I'm doing, then you're the right person. If you want to share your screen, then we'll all follow at the same pace as you. And the added benefit is you're going to make sure that it's going to turn out 
right because we're all going to be looking at your screen. Would anyone like to share their screen? Maybe I can share because I also did run in the first problem. So maybe the, you can help me out here. Okay, Michael, thank you. And um, anyone else who wants the chance to share will get that opportunity also. Okay. All right. So we're going to. I lost Chico Chat. <laughs> now I lost Chico Chat. Farah, see if you can hit the escape button. Right now, you're looking at his screen, right? You see Michael's see screen? screen, yes. And so your Kiko the chat escape button is, does not help. And at the very top of the screen, do you see view options? It's a black and white button. View options, something like that, or a blinking red circle. What we have to do, Farah, is we have to escape out of full screen mode. At the top of your screen, Farah, do you see a green rectangle? In the moment, I see only your picture because I have clicked now so many. You can so, see you can see me waving. Yes, and now I have the whole picture. So I, I'm in Zoom. I'm mm -hmm. in Zoom. But I lost Chico chat. Well, you because can... I, I clicked on this on this uh, button to try something, and then I came to another button, and then finally I lost all. Okay, we're going to let you share your screen too. I think that um, Michael, how about we let Farah share her screen, and I think that whatever problem she has, we're also going to solve yours too. Farah, can you share your screen with us, please? It'll be the green button at the bottom. Do you see the green I button? I have done, I have done this. Okay, and then- oh, Okay, okay, I, I have a second, uh, there is a second step. Exactly, there's two steps for sharing screen. And you're gonna choose the blue button, which is gonna share something with us. I think the, the translation will say something like share. It's too complicated here, you know, because I'm, I'm not really a specialist with all the things. And I have here now firewall and all these kind of things and have to choose and I can't. Okay, maybe we can schedule another time. How about today then you can watch? And Michael, if you wanna share your screen, Farah, we'll come back another time. And okay. if we'll definitely, we have all the time we need, but you'll definitely learn something by watching Michael's screen. So. Let's open up that tutorial. Maybe you have already done so, great. And if you could zoom in a little bit so other people can see it, please. That could be with the command plus, perfect. The first step is sign in and you've already signed in. So now we're looking at step two. There's a few ways to create a Kiko Chat event and maybe a little bit more too, please, Michael, for those that cannot see it as clearly. I just created a free account, um, but as I'm already locked in, I do I need to log out and, and then use the real account or? No, it, any account where you're logged in should work fine. Okay. So please go there, click on demo circle. So the, the sentence says, free event for testing purposes, visit the demo circle. It's right ne near your cursor. It's highlighted in green. Do you see free event for testing purposes? No. Do you see number two? I see. In the text, uh, in the in the document that you are in sharing. The document. Oh, I'm I'm already done that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm already in the demo circle. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I saw. It was already too. <laughs> Can you bring your demo circle over? Maybe it's on a different screen. Well, right I'm now. In this, I'm in the same browser. What do we see right now? Right we now. See the text. We yes, we see the tutorial. Quick well, start. it's just in another tab. So um, apparently the screen sharing is very slow. 
let's try screen sharing again. We'll, I'll stop screen share and we'll start it up again. It's okay. You know, we're, it's good that we experience every sort of problem in a safe space here. And okay. good. Do you see the tutorial again? I think it might take another moment. Okay. It could be, it could be bandwidth. If you'd like to turn off your video, that might help too. Yeah, I have a lot of bandwidth so it's probably not on my side, but I can try that and see. Um... In the meantime, Becky has asked, what is a Kiko chat circle? And if anybody sees the screen share come through, just please say, it. I think we all see a black screen. It says, Michael has started sharing his screen. Yes. We'll give it a moment. I will just explain what a Kiko chat circle is. So you're familiar with a Facebook group. Facebook has groups and Kiko chat has circles. A circle is a place for an online community or maybe for a company. And it has several shared tools. The first tool that's most helpful is a shared calendar. So you can have many different events on the shared calendar. So far today, we've just been talking about one event, but if you want many events, they show up on a calendar. And in order to let people know what's on the calendar, there's a newsletter that goes out every Monday, or you could turn it off. And it says, here are the upcoming events for the next three weeks. There's also a member directory where you can search through everybody in your community to send them a message. And there's a place for written typed conversations. There is a document library, a place to write blog posts. All of these tools are free. Michael, now we see the tutorial. Okay. Now if I switch my tab to the circle, can you Very see Very good. That? Yes, we can. Okay. okay. If you can zoom in a little bit more on this tab, please. I think you have such a nice large screen, but yeah. for us, it might be a lot, little hard for us because it's zoomed out. Uh, that's perfect. Thank you. So this is where I think many people are right now that are watching. You would, you're in the circle. The circle is called example community of practice. And there's some optional missing information at the top. You don't have to fill in the country or state or postal code. Sorry, can, is this the starting side or, or cause I, I, I clicked the uh, new circle, but that was from another side then. Please go mm -hmm. to this circle here. I'll share it with you, Pernilla. Mm -hmm. This will be the demo circle, list of events in the demo circle. Okay. Creating circles are free. So I can just join the circle? You can, yes. And this is the circle of everybody that's created a test event. You can also go down to where it says add an event. Please click the add an event green button. Okay, I think it's gonna refresh the page now that you just joined. Yep, I think the page is loading. So we'll give it a second. And now you click add event, great. So all you need to do Everybody that's on this page with Michael, just type in a title. That's all we need to do to create the event. It's great if you put your name on it so you know whose it is, but it's not necessary. These are just your test events. And if you scroll down a little bit more, you can add a description, absolutely, it's optional. You could change the start date and time if you want to, but you don't need to. And the duration would be the number of minutes. Type in Berlin. There okay. you go. And then, and then you can find it. It's based on the cities. If you want a two day event, you'd type in the number of minutes in two days. That's a little bit of friction, but ah, oh, that's the way. That's the way we have it for now. We're focused on a lot of the other advanced things that facilitators need, but we'll come back to make it, make it easier. Please scroll down. Oh, yes, it do you uh, get cut off when you reach that time limit point? Super question. 
to protect you from having people come back to the event tomorrow and join video, we turn video off automatically eight hours after your event is over. And your event is over when the duration has expired. We don't cut off the Zoom meetings, but we will hide the join video button eight hours after the duration. Scroll down a little bit more, please, Michael. And we're looking for visible, and we change that to hidden. It's that drop down there. Perfect. And that will just mean that all the other people in the demo circle will not see your event. Normally, please click the green button and that will create your event. Normally in a circle, it's a community. So you want community members to be sharing different events and you want the people in that community to be able to find the event. So that's how it normally works. Okay, Michael, please look to find your event. You could see several events are here. Oh, okay. Apparently, I the default dates were in the past. Oh, no problem. We can open it up. And let's go take a look and see what's here. Please, uh, then since it's a new browser tab, zoom in oh, a little bit more, okay. please. So this is going to look familiar to everybody. It's the same type of event that you entered. Please click the green button, and then it'll look very familiar. You're going to see the same butterflies and the same type of notes page. This is what you get out of the box, off the shelf with the Kiko Chat event when you just enter the title. You have 10 breakout rooms and the main room. Each of them is connected to a Zoom meeting automatically. Let me pause here to take any questions. And the next thing we'll do is we'll put in a Google Doc. Michael, please go to the tab in your browser that has the Google Doc and copy the link to the Google Doc. Michael's going to go into the address bar that's at the top of the page and he's going to copy it. That's how you get the link to the Google Doc. This could also be a Google Doc that you create on your own on Google Drive. So right now Michael's got that link copied and we're going to paste it into the proper spot. So the way to edit your event is at the top left where it says Michael's test, there's an edit button. It's gray because we don't want participants to see it when you're sharing your screen. We want them to focus on other parts of the page. But as long as you know where it is, that's all we need. This is where you entered the title and description. Please scroll down to the orange section that says customize your main space and your breakouts. You can change the number of breakout spaces up to 100. And we can say, make it five, whatever number you like. Let's add, OK, I'll give you a moment to, to change the number if you like to change the number. And then in the next spot where it says, add a title for each space, please type in lobby, L-O-B-B-Y. So this is where people can enter and hit, hit the enter on your keyboard. And we're going to go to the next row. And please here write main stage or auditorium or whatever you'd like. Okay, great. And breakout one, breakout two, you've got the idea. Coffee corner, please. And coffee <laughs> corner. <laughs> Super. Thank you. <laughs> and that's very good. So we've got, and you could put a, a final one there. Or the Swedish guys. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Super. Coffee and food. Super. Now, for the discussion topic for the main space, or the, it's really the first space, you can write welcome, uh, say hello here, or ask your questions here, anything you like. And that's, you'll see where this is gonna show in your event. Perfect. Let's put the Google Doc where it belongs, where it says online tools. There we go, just paste it in. Excellent. That's gonna be in the main room, or correction, it's gonna be in the first room, that's your lobby. Please hit enter and then paste it in again. Let's put it on two rows. So I'm going to show you something about Google Docs. If you change preview at the end of the link, 
to edit, E-D-I-T. You'll see the difference that Google Docs can show you two different ways to see a Google Doc. And now scroll all the way down to the bottom and click the green update button, please. When we arrive in the main space now, or the lobby, we're gonna see the Google Doc on the right-hand side. Very good. If you go to the, now notice here, there's no buttons on the top of the Google Doc. It's because that's the preview link. The regular link for a Google Doc says slash edit. So let's go to the main stage which is on the left, it says main stage. And now we're gonna see the same Google doc, but the link was different. It said slash edit. So we have that, that painful table of contents that Google puts there and you can close it by clicking that left arrow. But that's what participants have to do. So we recommend if you're starting in the lobby with a page that they don't need to edit, then use slash preview. And if you do want them to edit it in the breakout rooms, then slash edit. You also have to make sure that when you're in Google Docs, you make the link available for anyone who has the link. If that doesn't make sense to you because you haven't used Google Docs before, that's okay. You don't need to use Google Docs. But for the people that like to use Google Docs, just remember you have to make your documents available to anyone who has the link either give them the ability to edit it or just to view it. I'll pause there to take any questions. I have a question. Uh, I tried to follow, so I started to create my own uh, open uh, test event. Uh, and uh, I wonder how, how could I go back to create what we just did with this orange and green and, and red bars? If I forgot something when I set up my, my main room. How could I go, go back? You can see Michael is pointing to it at the top left. It's the edit button. And people do this. This is how they uh -huh. build a yeah. Kiko chat event over and over and over again. You edit it, you look at it. You edit it, you look at it. Back and forth yeah. and back and right. forth. Thank so you. You're very welcome. Okay, now let's put in something fun. Um, I'll share my screen for this one. Thank you, Michael, for demonstrating everything there. You're welcome. If we want to put in a document or a photo, we're going to upload a new resource. Here it is, line 17, upload a new image or a document. I'll put this also into the Zoom chat so you don't have to look too far for it. Please watch me do it first, and then I'll let you do it. It's only a few clicks. And if you see it all happen, you say, oh, OK, not too hard. So I open up this page. This is a multi-purpose page on Kiko Chat where you can create a blog post. You can upload a document. You can upload an image. It's one thing that you, you can do many things on this page. Let's see how my internet connection is so that the page loads. Here it is. This title is just for me, panoramic view. Panoramic meaning a wide view of nature often. I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom and upload a file. So I just put in a title that says panoramic view and I'm gonna upload a file. I click choose file. And then it'll prompt me on my computer to choose the panoramic view. I have one saved here from yesterday. All right, I've uploaded the file or it's about to upload the file. And now I click publish. So I'll, I'll give you a chance to do that. We're just taking a document or an image that is on your computer and we're putting it onto Kiko chat. That is going to give us the link to the file like this. And once we have the link to the file, then we can put it into our event. So I'll stop there and let you try that. I'm gonna back up and 
please try that, adding a new resource. We'll give everyone a chance to do that if you want to. And if, how about somebody new can share their screen with us now? Somebody that didn't get a chance yet? Yes, I can. Okay, Suzanne, wonderful. So, but um, where, where to start? In the Zoom chat, I've ah, pasted the, a link. Okay. Yeah. It says, Sorry, okay, good. It says upload a new image. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Okay. All we need here is the title, and then we go to the bottom and it says upload an image. You don't want to put anything secret or sensitive up here. People can't search for it, but the link is public. Anybody can go to the link. It's just nobody's going to know what the link is. It's hard to guess. So all the way at the bottom, it says upload a file. Very good. And then we choose option one and click the button to upload the file from your computer. You can pick any image that you like. Okay. Super. Yeah, just uh, wait a second. Uh, let me search something here. Okay. Excellent. Now please click publish. All right, so we're uploaded file. People will do this often on Kiko Chat because you might have a PDF in this room, in this room, in this room. So you might do that many, many times. Now you can right click on the blue button that says open this file. It'll be the blue button at the top. Right click and copy the link address. Some people like to click on it and open it and then copy the link address that way. So it's up to you how you'd like to copy the link address. Here, copy link address, okay. Perfect. Yeah. Let's go to your event now. You can leave this page open. And I think it's the tab just to the left of the current one that you're on. There we go. Do you see your event in the Was list it? of events here? You, you see the, uh, you see my example community of practice or do I, you what are do good. you see now? I see, yes, example community of practice. Yeah, okay. Have, have you created an event today? No, uh, no, just the one I, we just okay. did together, Susanna's test. Okay, let's, event. do you see it here, Susanna's uh, test event? No. Well, let's say you're but looking- But it, it, it should be hidden, no? so how- Oh, yes, and maybe, I, maybe you're signed in as two users, that's also possible. So here's another way to create an event. If you click on your name at the top right, and you, you could go my events, it's number five in the list. And then we'll see, good, it's loading. Then you might be in two different accounts. Maybe that's why oh. the- Ah, that's maybe why I had, um struggles to join the event yeah because i thought i registered but then i had to create a new account so probably that's it yeah yes i guess in two browsers maybe if it, you open something with zoom yeah. you may, or you click on the, the thing and it goes to your default browser which is not the one you're logged in let's <laughs> let's go and add an event the green button we'll click add an event <laughs> and you say my okay. test event now what we have here is a very a very big photo. Normally for a banner photo, we want it to be short and wide, but that's okay. Please go down to the orange section that says customize a main space and breakouts. Okay, I don't have to save anything. So that's just- Yes, we're still know, editing nothing. the form. That's yeah. right, you don't have to save it yet. Custom, the, okay. Go up to the orange one, which is a little bit oh, higher, please. Yeah. Perfect. And now we're looking for banner images. I think it's down another two or three. Here. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can paste this banner image into the top and it's just going to apply to the first room. So you can paste it in. Perfect. Now please scroll down and look for the green button to schedule the event. If you wanted to change the, t okay, good. 
When you click on your name at the top right, you're also able to change the text into German. Yeah, but it's okay. Okay, yeah. great. And there is your event. So please click on it says my test event. I see it at the bottom right. It's under future uh, events. I can see it and you don't ah, have to... future event. There it is. My test event. Okay. Great. So I open that. So let's go take a look at your event. When the event opens, click participate now, and we're going to show up in the lobby or the, the first room. And your banner image displays. Oh, cool. Yeah. And under that is the notes. If you keep yeah. scrolling down, you'll see the notes. That's so, what you said. Now it's quite huge, huh? so it's OK. But uh, yeah, but nice. OK. If anybody wants an example banner image for their event, you can use the one that I uploaded, or you can follow what she has done. Okay. And I will cool. give you the link to the one that I have uploaded. An example banner image is now in the Zoom chat. You can copy that, and you can put it. Beautiful view. So I stop screen sharing? Uh, maybe we'll do one more thing with you. Yes, OK. Um, let's, we're going to put the photo in instead of the notes. So normally a banner is at the top. It's going to be short and wide. We're going to move this banner photo since it's more of a big photo. We're going to move it down and take away the notes. Yeah. We're also going to put in a Google drawing. I'm going to put an example post-it drawing into the Zoom chat. Mm -hmm. And everybody can put this Google drawing. Example, Google drawing. The neat thing is people do not need to sign in in order to use it. Please click that link, Suzanne. And it's in the Zoom chat. Example, yeah. Google Drawing. Great. And copy the link now. And we're going to bring this link into your Kiko Chat event. You could use this for workshops, for open space. People can be moving the post-its around, making an agenda. Excellent. Now you can close this tab if you want. And I think the next tab we'll see is going to be your event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Please click edit at the top left where it says my test yeah. event, Suzanne 2. Great. So now you have copied the link to the Google yes. drawing. Please go down to the orange section where it says customize your main space and breakout. Okay. I am. All right. And Pranilla, that's a great question in the chat. I'll answer that in just a moment. Please scroll down to where it says online tools and paste in your Google drawing. Very good. Now take your banner image. You could triple click on it, click on it three times, and that'll select the whole thing. And you can cut it. Uh, Control X or Command X is a fast way to cut it. Yep. All right, now move it up into the area where we have online tools. So you already have online one online tool there. Put it on the second row. Now, this is going to display the Google drawing in the first room, and then it's going to display the photo in the second room. It's displaying it in different rooms because one row per room. But what if we want both the drawing and the Google and the photo in the same room. That's what I'm going to show you how to do here. OK. OK, so I go now to update, right? OK, let's go see it first. Very good. We'll click By update. pressing update, yeah. Thank you. Now, in the first room, we see a Google drawing. Success. You can, <laughs> you can edit it. You can move the post-its around, and other people that have this can move it around, too. Yeah. And you see someone else is moving in, in orange and purple. That's Great. Yeah, yeah. Now, please click on room one on the left hand side, and we will see your photo. This time, the photo replaced the notes. So there's no notes anymore because we put it where it says online tools. It's not the banner anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and, and where was the moment that you could say that because? I, now I remember hey, we, we put online tools, then I pasted the two links. So how did you know that the photo would appear in room one? 
on the first row, you have Google Drawing. So it goes yeah. in the first room. Ah, the so the order row. of appearance follows the order of the rooms. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And Good. this will come in handy when you have 50 rooms. Right now, you're pasting in links all over the place and it doesn't really feel good. I know, yeah. that. but there's an easy way to do it, which I will show you in a moment okay. where you keep track of it in a Google spreadsheet and then you copy okay. and paste in from the spreadsheet. So we'll show how to yeah. do it. But yeah. first, That's... let's put both of these in the same room. Please go back to edit. And then in the orange section, scroll down to where we have these two links where it says customize your main space and breakouts. And we look for online tools. Yeah. To the left of where it says HTTPS. So all the way at the left side of the line, put your cursor, please. Which, the first link? Yes, the first yeah. link. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Type in draw, D-R-A-W with a capital D, and then a colon, a colon is a two dots. Great, and we will not use a space, please. In the second one, we'll say photo or, and then colon, great. Now, again, they're still in two different rooms, so we wanna make it in one room. So to the left of photo, please delete or backspace. It's gonna move it up, move, Go to the front of photo and hit the backspace. Now it's one line, but yeah. we don't, it's two things. So we want to separate them. Put a space in there, please. I know that that's too much to remember. But that's, that's for the, the recording, yeah. <laughs> that's for the recording. And that is the quick way to do it. I'll, I'll then show you the easy way to do it. Yeah, so, but it's kind of logic. Huh? So if I have two lines, it says it's in two separate room. If I delete the line by putting it in one line, they will come into the same room. Is that what we are doing? Yes. Yeah. And if, if you think that's logical, then Kiko Chat is right for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but for, for those that see, it's easier when you do it and you're typing with your fingers. But for people who are watching, they're like, why did I put a colon? Why did I do a backspace? I showed you the yeah. fast way, and then yeah. I will show you the easy way. Okay, easy way comes next. Please click the green button, and we'll see what this does. You're going to come back to the first room, and now you have two tabs at the top. You see the blue button at the top in the center? Yes. Draw and, and click. photo. Yes, click photo. Ah, 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 okay. And I could add more here. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's no limit. Mm -hmm. And that is how you made the, what you showed before, where you have this agenda day one thing. The events, the events, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, I will show you an easier way. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing that, Suzanne. I'll share my screen now. Thank you. And when we go into our event, so here, this is what Suzanne is talking about, all the different tabs across the top. I'm going to go to edit the event. And then the same place Suzanne was, click customize your main space and breakouts. Online tools, this is where she was. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to memorize all this or even watch the video. You can click here, helpful hints, and then it explains a lot of what we just did. But I promise to show you the easy way. The easy way is this. I should probably put a big text there. It says, easy way. I, I think I'm going to make a note to myself to do that. <laughs> so we recommend keeping a copy of all of your links outside of Kiko Chat. So you click. Google spreadsheet template, and it opens up a new Google sheet. And there are some instructions here to help you make a copy of it. So you go to file and make a copy that's over here, and you're going to get your own copy. And here's how this sheet works. You can write the spaces on the left. And then going across, 
you can ignore this column right now. This is generated by the computer. Here's tab one, it has a name and a link. Here's tab two, it has a name and a link. Tab three, a name and a link. So you paste in the names and the links, and then you copy the green section. Maybe it goes all the way down here. However many rows you have, just copy that. And when you're editing your event under online tools and notes pages, you just paste it in. You don't need to look at it, you just paste it in. And then click the green button at the bottom. So this is the, the Excel sheet you showed has a kind of um, formula in this column that combines the links that have been put beside into this big column. Is that That's right? That's exactly yeah. right. I think yeah. I saw an event in South Africa for Sunday, which has 300 links. Oh. And they have multiple people. It's in different languages. They've got the same document in three different languages. So they have all these copies. They have translators putting the links in. So that's why you need a shareable document like this for a yeah. complex event. Multiple people can edit it. And then once you're okay. editing it, copy and paste, like you said, Suzanne. Mm -hmm. I want to try spatial chat with you. And oh, yes, cool. I think this will be a good way for us to do it. So I'll take the link. Could you, the thing you just did, can you show what it looks like? Oh, right here? Yeah. Absolutely. So. No, I mean, because we put that in, right? Mm -hmm. And then what does it? What does it look like? Uh, yeah. these, okay, it'll, I'll show. Yes, it has three tabs, instructions, draw, and video. Yeah, no, um, no, I mean when you put it out, when you, when you it called? publish it. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Yeah. I'll go to edit our event, and I'm actually going to keep the notes page at the main room because everybody, all of you are looking at that. So I'm just going to go down to the next row and paste it in here. So the second room is going to have our three tabs, instructions and draw and video. So I will click update, give it a moment. We're going to land in the first room, but we're going to need to go to the second room because that's the one that I changed. The first room will still have our notes with the yellow typing. Okay, first room looks the same. And now if you go to room one, then you'll see three tabs, instructions, draw, and video. This is just example.com is the one that we put in there. Could be, then we'll see our drawing. Okay, good, thanks. You're very welcome. Thank you for asking about it. And the video here, is a YouTube video. It's worth saying, I will, I will share a YouTube video. We have the instructions where it says all the tools you can embed. The instructions for embedding a YouTube video, you want to take the embed link, not the link at the top of the page. So to get the embed link, you will click share and then you will click embed. And it's simple once you've seen it the first time. I'll open up one of the videos. Pause. I'll scroll here. I click share. Then I click embed. I 
I want to click take all of the embed code first. And I copy the whole thing. When we put it in a breakout room, we only need this part. This is the link. But instead, I'm going to take all the embed code. Okay, so the code is the whole thing. I'll go back to the edit event page. I'm going to put this in the description. This is 500, 560 pixels, but if you want to get fancy, you can make it, instead of a number, you can make it a percentage, say 100%. And then on the RSVP page or the registration page, that video will take up the full width. If you have it as 560, a fixed amount, then it will cause some problems. So you want it to be flexible. And then I'm going to take that. This is the link right here. If you look closely, it says source or SRC. The source of the video is that link. It's an embed link from YouTube. Again, it's not the link you get at the top of the page from a YouTube video. You have to go into the embed code and get it. And then you can take that embed code and you can paste it in to your online tools. I'll put it in the third room. And now I'm going to put in spatial chat, which we can all test out. We buy this for $50 a month. You can rent it from us for $25, so half price. And we share it with many different events. So we reuse the same events. I just paste in the spatial chat link. This is going to be in the fourth room. So in the fourth room, I'm going to call that one networking. And we only need four breakout rooms, so I'm going to say four. So networking is spatial chat, and there is the link. When I upload this, you'll get a chance to test it out and see whether you like spatial chat. We have more topics than rooms. So the space automatically creates, it, it makes the other rooms visible if you have all the topics. So if you have 100 topics, you have 100 rooms visible. Topics always take precedence over the number of rooms that you specify. And also, don't be alarmed if you only put two topics, and then you say, where'd all my rooms go? The rooms are just hidden. They're not deleted. I'm going to go into spatial chat, which is the networking room. You're welcome to try it out. And I should have also hid the join video button in that room. I'll briefly show you how we do that. Actually, I think it's going to be in room three. I miscounted. So, what room? Room three or four? Let's, let's take a look. I, I want to put it in. This is the main space, then room one, two, three, four. So, actually, that is the fifth. I'm wrong. It's not three. It's, I believe it's going to be. Where it's, I want to put it where it says networking. Let me make sure I did this properly. I did not. So this is the main room. This is room one, room two, room three. Hmm. I'm going to put an empty row there, and that's going to put the notes. And then the one that says networking is going to get spatial uh, chat. Okay. So I had yeah. to find oh, that. It works, yeah. oh, oh, and while I was here, I want to also um, hide video in this room. So I went back. This is fun. You click show hide features and then hide the join video button in, I think we said room four. <laughs> I can't even remember. <laughs> so um, I, 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 yes, it's room four. Thank you. Yes. So when I click update, and if you refresh, 
the join Zoom button will be hidden in room four. And you'll want that because you don't want people to be in both Zoom and spatial chat at the same time. All right, now um, in room four, I can see in the URL or the link, it says breakout four, so that's good. Zoom is hidden over here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm entering spatial chat. First, you must enter your name. And then I click continue. The video is going to be in the browser. It's not going to be separate like Zoom. Here I so can check. Can, ah, so we can stay with the video. Yes. Cool. If you're using Zoom and spatial chat at the same time, there's probably going to be some interference and your camera might not be in both. So you may experience that right now. We recommend that people are only in one or the other. It also prevents the sound from going around, around, around. I'm going to go in and mute myself here. I see that Michael is there and Suzanne. I, I scroll down a little bit and there's the mute button. So I'm now muted. The neat thing about spatial chat, oh, I see a lot of people are joining here, is that you can move yourself around. So click on yourself and drag yourself around. And how about everybody mute themselves on Zoom and just try it out on spatial chat for a moment. I don't hear you. Why don't I hear you? Your microphone is out. Hi, Far. We're doing an experiment in spatial chat. We're going to all come back to Zoom now. And why I could not follow the experiment? I cannot hear you. So, but this could also allow to to have kind of different rooms, different spaces. Oh, I hear myself with an echo now. I can hear you, Suzanne. I think you might also be in spatial chat, so you can get out of that. Still, Tara, but I I left. I don't hear an echo. You sound good to me. No, no, no. Good. It's okay. What were you thinking, Suzanne? Yeah, I got the idea that. One one scenario could be to to open different rooms in different tools. Yeah, to have one room in spatial chat, one room in Zoom, one room in I don't know your tribe or so whatever. So have people in different um, virtual spaces and and play around there on different topics also. Yeah, nice. And Farah, well, no, you like couldn't. It, yeah. Super. Thanks for that experiment. Yeah. Farah, you couldn't hear us because we turned our sound off in Zoom. And we only had our sound in this other tool, which is, it's, it's not a simple tool, but it's empowering. I wouldn't recommend using it on your first event or for people that are new to Zoom later. People are still getting comfortable to those tools. Right now you're muted, so I'll click ask to unmute. 
Did you want to say something, Farah? There we go. Yes, because uh, I did not understand why I could not take part into this experiment. Was it only between you two or only I was excluded because I have some limited knowledge? And... It's probably because I wasn't clear in the instructions. If you would like to try it out, this is the way to do it. You go down to this room where it says networking. And when you click networking, then spatial chat is gonna load on the right over here. And this is where you can go into that tool. It looks like a garden. I don't see networking. Do you see this? It is the, the fourth room. Okay, now I see it. Yes, you can go there in networking and you can try out that tool. We're gonna to wrap up here for the final five minutes. People can go at any time. I think some helpful things for me to share would be we have open office hours six times per week, approximately. You could just drop in with no notice and ask any question that you like. I'll put that in the Zoom chat. Also, my email address and WhatsApp phone number. If you, any questions or things that you'd like to discuss here? Dawn asks, will I share the spreadsheet used for the links? Absolutely. You can get it by going into the orange section and then clicking online tools and then helpful hints, but I'll give you the direct for the direct link to the link tracker. I'll put that here in the Zoom chat now. I'll also put it in the notes for the event. Thank you for the question, Don. Other questions? After our session, do I have access to this um, to this tutorials? Yes, you do. That's one advantage of Kiko Chat is that when Zoom closes, all the notes are still right where you put them. They're still on that same web page. The web page doesn't close until you, as the event creator, go to edit and then show hide and close the event. So really all the events stay open. The video is gonna turn off in eight hours, but if you were the organizer, you could turn the video back on. All those notes stay there, you continue to have access. I'm gonna then take the recording of Zoom and upload it to YouTube and then put it in place of the Pavarotti video. So when you come back to the event on that landing page, unfortunately, you'll see me instead of Pavarotti. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I mean, not an event I have created, uh, but I mean the event we are taking part now. I mean, you have there some instructions and uh, files yes. I can open. Will I have access to it later yes. when we close this? Yes, you will both. You will have your event and you will have the event that we are in together. They both remain open the same. And how I get access to it? I click the same link you sent me in my email and then I get to this? Yes, you can. Also, you can click your name at the top right where it says your name and you can click my events and then you'll see the previous events. Okay. Um, Dawn just had another question that I also had. Um, how do you change the butterfly photos? Because in the, uh, in the edit, I, I saw that you can change it to gardens, um, but can I also have my own uh, ones? Absolutely. This is another important thing to change. You found where you click, you click edit, and then we go to the orange section. 
down at the bottom of the orange section, you found that there's only two options, butterflies and gardens. So if you wanna create more options, please click here. Helpful hints, create a new event design template. And then you'll say my example template. And now you click this link one time for every photo that you want. All the photos will be displayed in order. So if you have, you could use just one photo and it will be displayed in all your rooms. If you use two photos, the first photo is in the first room and the second photo is in all other rooms. We'll click add, we'll click that link. And so we see this blue area. So I'll say main room. I like to say display order zero for the main room because then I can say display order one for breakout one, display order two for breakout two. And then you upload a photo here. And if it's a wide photo, check this box and we'll make sure the full photo width is displayed. If you'd like to add more, click the blue button again, 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 one time for every one of your photos. And the good thing is you can use this template in many of your events. Once you create it, you go back to your edit event page and you refresh this page and you will see it. Thank you for that question. It's important for me to cover. Thank you. There's a Google group you can join if you're interested in asking more questions. Sometimes I'll answer. Uh, sometimes other facilitators will be faster than me. And I'll put that in the, Google, in the Zoom chat. I'll stay on for a few more. I'll stop the recording here and just want to thank everybody who's at home. We have those open office hours every day. You can find them right on our homepage. The link is there. And thanks very much for your time today. If you want to say goodbye now, that's perfect. And then I will stay on and answer any final questions you have. So thank you so much for attending today. Thank you, Lucas. Thank you so much. See you again. See you thank later. You. Thank you. That communication and, and well presented. Thank you. You're very welcome, Carolyn. Thanks a lot. See you around. Bye. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Bye bye. Ava. Good night. Good night. <laughs>